Thank you, Nancy, for the promotion of this event. We got a really good turnout for our 2.30 program. How many of you came to last month's Be Inspired program? I Two of you. Oh, you got. It wasn't it great? All right. And Jessica has such an awesome, inspiring story and to really tips for how we can achieve our goals, like some tips that she's really learned along the way. But last month, she only had about 10 or 12 minutes, and today she has a whole hour. And um, she has left time for questions and answers, which is really nice. We had a lot of that this morning. And Jessica truly inspires me. She, at one point in her life, was homeless. She was not raised by her parents. And when I heard that, I thought, how many people would just stay in a, in a victim mentality and not really do anything with her life? So not only has she proven to be the number one female lightweight boxing champion in the United States, soon to be in the world, she is also, she has her own clothing line. She makes natural creams and lotions. She is a model. She is a painter and a photographer. All right, I'm good. All right, really. <laughs> and, and also quite inspiring is she's a mentor. And in her heart, she really wants to help women primarily move forward in their lives. So please help me welcome Jessica McCaskill. Thank you so much. Um, it's very humbling that you guys would want to come and listen to me talk, so thank you for, for being here. Thank you for coming the last time, and thank you for watching online. Um, the last one is still available online, and this one will be available too, so if you know anybody that um, didn't get a chance to make it today, we're going to make sure it's online for them to view. Um, so to that intro, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of an in-depth um, of my day-to-day. Um, of course, I work here at RJO, but when you compare all the things that I do and all of my hobbies, I get bored easily. The things that I do, <laughs> boxing is pretty close to a full-time job if you count the hours up. Um, the things that I have to do and the time that I have to spend, it's definitely at least a part-time job. But I get here about 6.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. Um, I work in reg, and, uh, reg reporting next to deliveries. If you're ever looking for me, I'm right there. But I get here about 6.30 and I leave about 3.30 and then I head right to the gym. And so I'm there from about 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. I'm either doing my own training, I'm training with one of two of my coaches, um, or I'm teaching class. I teach the kids class every day and I teach Wednesday nights. Today is Wednesday. Not calling anybody out. I'm just saying I'm teaching class tonight. Um, and then if I, if I do have a fight coming up and camp is in session, I get up at 4.30 about 4, 4.30 in the morning and start to do my training in the morning and then from there, RJO, gym. And on the really long days, if I have fighters that have fights coming up, we do have fights coming up this Thursday, um, then I have to be there for them and prepare them for their fights and uh, corner them so that they can you know, get their win and reach their goals. So it's not always about me, but I, I still am putting a lot of time. So to say that, um, these tips that I have have gone through my crazy lifestyle and they help me to reach my daily goals. So they've been tested and approved by me. So the, we have three tips. Um, I'm going to stop for questions after each of the tips. So if you have anything directly related to that, please feel free to save your question and you can shoot it out then. Um, and feel free to write things down. If you want to take notes on your phone, I'm not offended at all. So the first tip is to stay focused. Somebody probably has told you in your life, just stay focused. And you're like, what does that even mean? You know, very, very vague um, statement, blanket statement there. Have you guys seen a horse with blinders before? Yeah. Like the, the ones with the, the race horses? So let's do an exercise. So I want you to put blinders up. None of this, no peeking. Put blinders up right next to your face. Now, can you see the person next to you? No. You cannot. So blinders are to help you to focus forward on your goal and to get rid of all of the distractions on every side of you. I, am, I do this all the time. I think I'm over it, but I'm not really sure. I go to the gym, I get on the treadmill, I'm on a comfortable like three, maybe five if I'm feeling ambitious, 
and then somebody gets on the treadmill right next to me and they're at like a hard seven and next thing you know I start bumping mine up and we're like racing all of a sudden and I can't breathe and I'm about to pass out but that's because I didn't have my blinders on that's because I'm focusing on them and they're focused on their goal but I've changed my roadmap to a goal that's not even mine I've gotten off my path so you want to keep your metaphorical blinders on um, just so you can make sure to take away all of those distractions now when I looked up blinders um, I'm very literal when I when I talk and the words that I use they're they're used for horses to prevent seeing aside them and also behind them and I never really thought about that I just thought they're on the side of their face and they can't see the things that are on the side of them okay so let's try another exercise put your blinders back up now I want you to try to see behind you can you see what's behind you you can't and to that point there are a lot of people who are not going to be on your level we can say they're behind you and they're behind you for a reason so they're not as developed as you are. They're not as experienced as you are. So, and this happens to me very often, people will come up to me and give me about 15 minutes of advice about boxing and they've never boxed a day in their life. And I'm just like, <laughs> and, it's, and it's nothing that's you know bad. They're not on the same boxing level as I am and that's fine. They may be, may be doing something else in their life, but you just have to be careful of those distractions. You have to make sure that you have your game plan and not be distracted by what other people are doing. Even if they seem like they're passing you up, they have a whole different goal. And if they're behind you, they might not be able to help you move forward. They might drag you behind as well. Now, when you have these goals, you are very invested. You've invested yourself, your time, your money, your emotions, your mental stability. So I like to kind of categorize this as... Um, when you have goals and you start to make these goals, it leaves you emotionally vulnerable and also mentally vulnerable. So what I mean by that, emotionally vulnerable, you have these insecurities, you have a sense of being inferior. This whole thing is probably new to you. You've never done it before. You're nervous. You have a sense of instability. And all of those things are almost targets, especially when you have a threat coming at you, when you have naysayers and you know, I'm going to get up and I'm going to run tomorrow. And somebody's like, yeah, right, okay, sure. Or I'm going to lose weight by whatever. And they're like, okay, she's going to last a week, you know. And so these things kind of drilled right down to your insecurities. And it's very important that you understand that this is a possibility. Like this is um, kind of an open door that you're going to have. So if you know it's coming or you know it has a possibility of coming, then it won't t take you off guard when it actually happens. Quick story. So I had a, um, my very first fight, I had this reporter kind of blogger guy come in and he did a video and he put it on YouTube and it was just kind of um, an interview type of thing and it was fine. And then maybe about one or two fights later, he came back, he came to the gym and that's where you're going to find me all the time. And he came in and one of the very first things he said was, Ooh, how's your weight? And you know, first of all, to any female, you ask them about their weight, <laughs> you're in danger zone. I have to be a little bit more free about it because um, it, it's, it is my job. I get paid to be on a certain weight at a certain time for a certain amount of time. So I just was kind of like, uh, it's on track, it's fine, you know, just tried to nip it in the bud right then and there. So we talked a little bit more and he circled right back around and he said, do you think you're gonna make weight by you know weigh-ins? And so not only was he attacking or threatening um, a goal of mine, but then he added a time factor to it. Do you think you're gonna make weight in time? And if, if I don't make weight in time, there are um, repercussions, I can get suspended, I could pay a fine, things like that. So he's attacking me, you know, more or less, and, and now I'm starting to be insecure. Am I gonna make weight on time? And oh, maybe I shouldn't eat for a couple, like all this random stuff. And I know what my goal is, I know what my timeline is, and if I had fallen into that trap, then I very well, you know, I could have made weight, but maybe by doing something more drastic, and then when it came time to fight, I might not have been ready. I might not have been strong enough because I was listening to him. So if you know that these things are gonna come at you, it's, it's okay, just be prepared. And what I normally do when things like this arise is I, I make sure I have my poker face on. 
you know, just not even be bothered by it. In one ear, out the other. And you have to be able to control your emotions. I know it's difficult. Um, I definitely wanted to give him a piece of my mind and kick him out of my gym. But what if he had his camera on? What if he had his uh, recorder on? And I'm just, you know, words. And then that could have been bad publicity for me. So it's very important. Um, you never know what's going to happen. But as long as you know that there's a possibility that it is going to happen, then you're set up to be able to overcome those things. The other part of that was uh, the mental um, vulnerability. Now, the way that I take those and separate it, the mental vulnerability isn't necessarily based on emotions. Um, this can come about without being happy, sad, or anything like that. But the mental vulnerability is when something happens and you change, you actively think about changing your game plan. You change your roadmap. So this can happen, you know, you're, you're easily led astray when you're mentally uh, vulnerable. You're easily influenced. Um, you change your roadmap and this usually happens when you're lacking wisdom or experience in something. And if this is a new goal, then that's most likely the place that you're in. And that's okay, it's just one of those things, like I said, where as long as you know that this can happen, somebody can be talking to you, like I said, somebody giving me boxing you know, advice and they have never stepped into a ring. And I could take that advice and then I could change my roadmap and then that leaves me in a place that I never wanted to be in, just because I'm letting myself be vulnerable mentally to change my roadmap. Um, let's see. Does anybody have any questions about blinders or staying focused or mental, emotional and vulnerability? I yes. have a question on uh, 23 and figure out controlling emotions. Yes. It's not easy. Said than done. Very true. So I've heard you say like you would go work out. Mm -hmm. The, the first step is realizing that you have the ability to be triggered. Because if you're just kind of walking down the street and somebody says something to you and then you just, you feel that emotion, you're not prepared for it. But if you prepare yourself for it and you know that, okay, somebody could come at me with something and then when it happens, you're like, aha, I knew this was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of act accordingly from there. Um, change your change the subject, you know, in, close it down, you know, with with this guy He just he was asking me all these questions and I let him know we're fine. We're right on schedule like bam There's nothing else that you need to say about my weight um, So that the first step is realizing okay, this can happen. So it doesn't surprise you anytime something takes you off off guard. It's um, usually the worst scenario Okay, we're gonna move on to the second point the second point is don't run, expect and prepare. I always say the easiest thing to do in a new situation is to quit and quit right away. The first thing you do is to quit. It's kind of like when you say, I'm gonna get up tomorrow morning and I'm gonna run. And then tomorrow morning comes and the alarm clock goes off and you hit that snooze button. I know we've all been there. So you never made it past step one. You never made it out of bed to go run. So it's just one of those things where you're gonna have to expect roadblocks and prepare for them. So chocolate chip, okay, told you to remember that. Um, some of the things that I've done, my coach is gonna watch this, so it's just, I can't imagine what he's gonna say later, but <laughs> he's gonna say put a lock on the refrigerator. Um, part of the problem with, I've had that goal before. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna run before work. Part of the problem was actually getting up. A friend of mine came over and baked cookies or something and there were some white chocolate chips left in my refrigerator. I didn't put them there. But I told myself, okay, I'm gonna wake up and my reward for getting up is to get a handful of chocolate, chip cook chocolate chips. So the alarm clock goes off and I'm thinking chocolate chips. So I go and I'm up and I'm in the kitchen and I get my handful and then I'm up. So it actually worked. It's not something I'm saying to do. Don't say, Jessica told me to eat chocolate chips in the morning. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. But, you know, these are, there's certain things that you have to do to help yourself. 
this can be as easy as you make it. Just because you say, okay, I'm gonna eat healthy, doesn't mean you have to eat Brussels sprouts, okay? You can, <laughs> Brussels sprouts can be good, but I feel like they're very tricky. Um, but you could do something that you like, say you like tomatoes, okay, well tomatoes are healthy and get yourself a nice you know, salad dressing, something like that. It doesn't have to be hard, you don't have to punish yourself on this journey. The second part of me getting up to go run, so I was up, okay, got through step one. Now I had to actually get out of the house and go run. And I felt like it just took forever to get like my shoes and my, my headbands and to get everything together. And by the time I got ready, it was either too late or I had to cut my run short and it just wasn't really worth it. So my next step of expecting and preparing was I decided to get my clothes together at night or on the weekend, I just would have a whole stack of socks, shirt, pants, socks, shirt, pants for every day and just set them on the couch or set them on your dresser somewhere so when you get up, you got it, you go. Um, one of the things I actually started to do is I would go to bed with my running gear on. So if you saw me sleeping, you probably thought I was gonna run a marathon in my sleep or something, but it worked because by the time I got up, I was up and I was ready to go and then I just hit the streets. So you have to be able to um, prepare based off of what your specific challenges are. So I keep talking about this road map and these, these uh, road trips. Who has been on a road trip? Good, perfect, lovely. One of the longest road trips I've ever had to do was from St. Louis to uh, Atlanta. And that was about eight hours. And somebody said from here to Atlanta was like 11 hours, I think very very long so if we're going from Chicago to Atlanta we're planning a road trip so what what do we need anything car so you either need to have a car or you need to make arrangements to rent a car what else do you need snacks, snacks. that's what I'm talking yeah. about so you either need to to bring snacks before you leave or you're gonna need to make some pit stops Right? Yes. yes. Everybody's like, yes. <laughs> okay, what else do you need? Gas. What? Gas. Gas. Okay. So uh, now somebody said, who was that? Was Yasmin. She said, I only filled up twice. I had a truck, so I had to fill up multiple times. So she said she only had to fill up twice. So let's say we fill up here and right before we get to Atlanta. This is gas. So we're making our road map. What else do we need? Just shout out, I had a dog, so I had to, to make more music. stops. Yeah. Music, you need to make sure you have your music ready. What else do you have to think about when you're going somewhere? Yeah. Money, pack your, pack your clothes, traffic, if you have to drop somebody off, pick somebody up, if you oh. need. <laughs> you know what, I didn't hear that last time. Let's just say there's all these, I mean, make yeah. sure you have change. <laughs> that could be accurate. Um, if there's construction on the way, the weather, there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration on your road trip. So this is, this is pretty much an example of what your road map could look like, okay? You're, gonna, you're going to, um, weight is one of my main goals that I have to do all the time. So you're gonna lose weight, so that means you're gonna work out and you're gonna eat right, and so you have to set it up visually. So I'm gonna set mine up. This is kind of what my everyday my everyday roadmap looks like. It's gonna look a little different and that's okay. I just want you guys to know it doesn't have to visually look like a timeline. So my overall goal is to be a boxer, right? Yeah. So from there, I need to focus on fitness. Sorry, this is a little sloppy. From there, I need to worry about my training. Whoa. From there, I need to worry about training breaks down into strength and conditioning, cardio, also boxing. Boxing breaks down into bag work, mitt work, and sparring. Cardio breaks down into running, swimming, and bike. Fitness still breaks out into diet, 
actually losing weight and then diet. Um, the strength and conditioning can be broken down into working on my speed and my agility and my strength. Um, the bag work can be broken down. The sparring could be broken down. So this is my visual of how my workflow goes. And when you have a goal, this is the overall, I'm gonna change colors because I can. Um, this is the overall goal. But what happens is you're just breaking it down into smaller goals. So it's okay, diet, one small victory. Sparring, one small victory. Bag work, one small victory. So just think about it as breaking everything down into smaller goals so it doesn't seem like it's gonna be overwhelming. How long does it take to develop a habit? Anybody? 21 days. 21 days. Anybody else? I think 21 days is probably the most, does anybody need to take a picture of this before I take it down? No? No? 21 days is probably the most popular answer. Um, that's what I have definitely seen in my research, but we're gonna use 30 days. And we're gonna break it down into groups of 10. And I'll tell you why in a minute. We're gonna add an extra 10 days for a very specific reason, nine days. Okay, so. Days zero through 10. Your first 10 days of trying to execute your goal. You have your goal, you're starting off, you're excited and ready to go. These are actually your unbearable days. These are the days when you wake up and you hit that snooze button, probably maybe three out of the 10 days, and that's okay. You're working on getting that goal and working towards finishing it. It's just the first 10, zero to 10 days. It's more about making a mental habit of what you're trying to do. Days 11 oops, through 20. 11 through 20. These days are considered the uncomfortable days. So these days, you're doing a lot better than the first 10 days. And these are the days where you start to make adjustments. So I realized I had a problem getting out of bed. I also realized that I had a problem figuring out an outfit to run in, kind of your typical female problem. Um, so I started to make adjustments. Okay, well, give myself an incentive to wake up. Uh, get my clothes ready the weekend before or the night before so that I am ready to go without any roadblocks. These days are a lot more satisfactory just because you're a lot further into your goal. The 20 days into your goal is, is not you know, something to uh, smirk at, you know, it's pretty decent, but you haven't gotten there yet. Now by the other 21-day uh, um, cap, you would probably be in a habit by now. But we're gonna extend it another 10 days, nine days. So 21 through 30, these days are your unstoppable days. unstoppable. So once you get to the last 10 days, these days are, you're through making your adjustments. You can still be making adjustments, but this is when it really nails into your muscle memory, your mental memory. This creates the transformation in what you're trying to do. So if we would have stopped 10 days ago, you might not have it fully in your system, but if you're doing it for an entire month, this is what really drives it into your everyday uh, workflow. And of course, there's a serious satisfaction with being able to do something for 30 days straight. Does anybody have any questions about expect and prepare or making your roadmap or the 30 days? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Mm 
Yeah, very possible, yes. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. And I'm wondering, in, even in life now, in boxing, mm -hmm. where it's like that next person, mm -hmm. where you're training, preparing yourself, <laughs> is there a time when you have doubts when you step in the ring when you, when you're confident in the fact that you have prepared yourself for the fight? I think from, from my standpoint, um, being a female boxer is very difficult. There's a lot of politics. It's really just getting um, a promotion deal um, with the promoters was difficult. They didn't even, oh, you're Jessica, that's nice, and you know, kind of keep going. And we had to make this huge plan and strategize. And so it's, I've always had this mentality of I can't lose. Like, if I do lose, then it's going to be a shocker for everybody because I'm going in like head first, and you know, um, I kind of have this mental theory of die trying like I'm gonna win or die trying and I don't mean that literally um, but very it's very um, it's it's a way of living for me it's like I cannot fail I'm I will not lose to the scale that's when you come in overweight usually when you weigh in you get maybe one pound and a lot of people they'll mess up their fights because they lost to the scale they didn't win uh, lose the weight on time so I just have mental things like I will not lose to the scale. I'll be three pounds under if I have to. Um, I'm going to go fight this person. It doesn't matter what they look like. One of the girls that I fought, she had tattoos for sideburns, and it's like you know what? That's all right. You know, it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna throw down anyway. <laughs> um, great gal, but you know, it's just like you 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 never want to put anything in front of yourself and have an opinion about it before you even know. You know, there can be some very scary things that come up in front of you, but it's like, you know, that's just the outside shell. And you have to believe that what's inside of you is scarier than what you're seeing in front of in front of your face. So I, I just kind of go with, sorry, go in thinking, um, you know, I got this, like I'm going to demolish, you know, I think on a very big scale. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna demolish, and I'm just like nice and. <laughs> um, any, any question? Go ahead. All right. It seems like it kind of blows me away in that you're just so confident about it. That's really cool. Um, and my question then is do you ever just feel so tired and like, all right, I, I just wanna hang this up? I've been um, very, very tired to the point where literally six shots of espresso would not keep me awake. Um, I've been very stressed out to where it's just like I feel like I, I can't function. And, um, and I never get to the point where I say I want to give up. It's just kind of like, okay, I need to... Um, I really like these road map analogies. It's, it's really funny. I laugh on the inside. Um, I want to pull over for a pit stop, you know? <laughs> um, like this week has been, it's been kind of stressful. I've had some relatives in town and then um, today with the speech and everything. And then, you know, my coach is like, what do you weigh? And he's probably going to watch this and laugh. But, you know, those are the kind of things that I come up against. And we have, you know, fights on Thursday coming up. And so my time has just been really crazy, but it's just like, okay, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna do nothing tonight. That's my pit stop. Um, and I just have to find my zen, find my space somewhere, and then kind of recharge, and then the next day face it as, as long as I can, as hard as I can. And I would also maybe imagine that you refocus on your why. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm, there's never gonna be a day where I'm not gonna go to the gym because the kids are expecting me to be there. Um, if I'm not there, they'll ask about me, and I might be in trouble the next time I come back. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, n I never just want to call off work for no reason. You know, it's just, you know, I like being here. Everybody's really awesome, and it's, you know, I don't want to mess up, you know, what I have going here. So, you know, RJO has its own why. Everything has its own why. So it's like, okay, it's time to go to RJO. I have my whys. Let's go. Okay, it's time to go to the gym. I have my whys. Okay, let's go. You know, if, if, if it gets to the point where I need to refocus on that, then the whys are there. Yeah. All right. The last goal, or the last point that I have is keep your eye on the prize. And what I mean by that is to remember your why. The most important thing about remembering your why is that your why will change. It's okay if it changes. 
if you feel like you're just stuck right in one spot, then continue to follow your instinct of what you're doing and you'll find your why, you'll find um, the next step in your, in your goal, in your roadmap. My why started off as just being fit. I wanted to put myself into some kind of fitness. From there, I wanted a challenge, something that was a lot more challenging. And so from there, I started to compete in boxing. Once I started to compete and that started to kind of get, you know, repetitious, I wanted to compete on a national level, an elite level. So I went to Colorado a few times and I um, fight, fought against a couple of the girls, like the best girls in the nation. Once I felt like I had kind of gotten everything that I could out of that experience, I decided it was time to turn pro. So right now I'm pro and my goals are to be a world champion. Um, I just won the ABO intercontinental belt and title, but I still have more goals that I wanna reach. And it's okay if your why is starting to pair up with other whys. Um, one thing isn't going to push you every day. So now I teach, like I mentioned. I have a bunch of seven to 17 year olds and I even have baby boxing and that's four to six year olds. <laughs> you say all oh, until they're in your class. <laughs> No, but they're great, and it, it really pushes me to find ways to keep their attention and also teach them the skill that I know. Um, and so they're a why. Helping others with their fitness goals. I have people that ask me questions all the time, and I don't know everything. I definitely don't know everything, and so that pushes me to keep my research up. And so when somebody does ask me a question, I can give them sound advice. So I just want to keep continuing to motivate my clients and my kids, and that's that's where my why is right now. Um, the outcome is always worth the struggle. It's not going to be easy. You can make it as easy as you like. Like I said, those chocolate chips really got me through some tough days, um, got me started. And you might, like I said, you might not know what's next, but once you follow your instincts, once you've been doing something for 30 days, it's definitely in your system. And if you keep going, you'll see different ways in which you'll break out. Um, somebody asked me in the last in the last session about like the different things that I do and have they always been on my roadmap and some of them have been on my roadmap a little bit longer than boxing has but I came to a roadblock and I didn't see any way in which um, I could continue with those ventures and then eventually I just kept going I kept doing the natural next best thing and eventually, maybe a year or so later, some of the things opened up for me. So it's not gonna be an overnight turnaround and everything isn't going to be you know, textbook, especially um, textbook as to how someone else says it's how, it's how it's gonna go. That's how it went for them. Your life might be totally different. Any questions about keeping your eye on the prize? Yes? Not necessarily. Can I just ask you a question yeah. in general? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starting those two things that I mentioned, um, but I'm wondering how, how what were you like when you were little mm -hmm. and younger, and like I'm just I, I'm wondering if the experiences that you had made you this really strong, confident, unbelievable woman that you are. Um, the experiences definitely had something to do with it, but it was more so some and some of the things that I had to go through. I, w I was looking for a different source of strength, and it wasn't always there. And funny enough, as being a child, I was the source of strength for some of the older people. So um, I think I was in about fourth grade, and we were homeless. We lived in the back of a church, and... You know, it was just kind of one of those things, like put on your poker face and you keep going and, you know, eventually things get better. But um, at the time, it was just, you know, I didn't really, I couldn't really find answers. Nobody had answers. I mean, you're the, you're the kid in a situation like that. And, and when you look up to the adults and they, they don't really have answers for you, you just try to work through it. Um, I am definitely a, a woman of faith. And so I think that definitely pulled me through as well. 
So once you have that kind of in your, your resume or your repertoire or just your life experience, that's something you draw on for the next really big, difficult experience. And then once you've conquered that, you pull on that for the next really big, difficult experience. And so it kind of um, domino effect. So you never uh, fell into oh, poor me, I'm a victim. No, I, I, I felt like that was such, um, I, I think I felt like I wanted to be normal, like everybody else, and you know everybody else is just being a kid and living life. You know they don't they don't know every situation that you go through, and it's not something you bring up at the lunch table, really. You know, um, so it, it's just I think I had a fight to be normal and a fight to just live life and not let something pull everything else down. Because for me, it just seemed like you know this one thing. And I have all this other stuff to look forward to, so it just I just kind of put it in the corner for a minute and tried to live life and let those experiences um, keep me going. Those are the main points that I had for today's um, pep. But does anybody have any other questions? Yes. I think I adopted that when I turned pro because I used that specifically for camp. Um, after 3.30, when I'm in camp, after 3.30, I don't eat or drink unless I need to, you know, safety first. But basically, a lot of people will probably eat breakfast around 8 o'clock and you probably have dinner around 8 o'clock. I have breakfast at 4 a.m. and I probably stop, I stop eating when I leave here, which is about 3.30, 4 o'clock. So it's kind of the same thing, just times are shifted, and then the rest of that time they call it intermittent fasting. Um, and that has helped me to lose weight um, pretty rapidly. And once I kind of figured out that that was working, this situation here, I'll have a fight and then I get a little time off and they say, okay, you got a fight coming up. And so I have to jump back into this intense routine. And so from here, the first couple of days of I'm not gonna eat after such and such time, first couple of days did not work out okay first couple of days it was like okay well I'm hungry or a couple of days later oh I have you know a, a dinner party to go to and you look weird if you're the only person not eating so you're not meeting your goal and eventually you start to get into that mental habit in the first 10 days um, then the second 10 days it's it's you know making adjustments to make sure okay I'm gonna meal prep my food I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of snacks during the day, I'm gonna eat heavier during the day so I don't have to worry about feeling hungry later. And then around that uncomfortable stage, that's where it starts to get pretty easy and it doesn't even phase me. And when I tell people, they're like, what, what are you talking about, you don't eat? And it's just like, yeah, it's, you know, I'm not even hungry right now. And I go to the gym and I still work out. Um, and then the last, you know, 30 days is probably when I have to weigh in for my fight, so. Um, once I realized that that was working, that's something that I kept doing. Do you um, take any supplements or both food? I do protein powder. Um, that's pretty much it, only because I'm a little weary about what else is in these supplements that you take. And there's really, um, really strict rules about what I can have and what I can't have. And there's just a long list of stuff you can't have. And it's like, how about I just take nothing and then I don't have to worry about this list. Um, and they do, they'll blood test you. Um, they test your urine, all kinds of stuff. And I don't, I don't ever want to lose to the scale. I don't ever want to have to lose to any kind of testing as well. And you, he you hear so much about that nowadays. Um, UFC fighter so-and-so tested positive for X, Y, Z. And I just feel like it hurts your reputation so much. And I've always wanted to be very natural going into my fighting and not have to depend on any kind of supplement. Mine has a day that was more like you. <laughs> <laughs>
that's very true. Timing is is all in what you're doing and what your goals are. So yeah, it's very true. Same thing with any other kind of schooling or, you know, if you move to a different location, it's like, okay, this whole first year is like, this is not cool. I want to go back to where I know, you know, being here, um, I moved here in 2012, December of 2012. I didn't know anybody here. I got a job actually um, two blocks down at RBS and I just was kind of in my own zone and eventually I started to make a few friends. I finally found my boxing gym about nine months after I moved here and things started to finally get in a group, but it took a really long time. So I agree with that. Go ahead. <laughs> my age is very much in the media right now you could probably google it um, I will be 33 on the 8th um, but I started boxing in 2008 and it was never really anything where I had like this um, like typically kids say oh I want to do this when I grow up I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever and I never really said, hey, I want to be a boxer. Um, I got a present to do a kickboxing class for a month, and that's where it started. And I, I was so excited, I cried. Like, that's the kind of girl I am. If you give me flowers, that's nice. But if you get me a chance to punch somebody <laughs> in the face, I will cry over that. So um, it was just a gift, and I'm very competitive, and I always have a, you know, a competitive nature, especially when it comes to like fitness or working out or, or playing an act activity. So from there, once that class was over, I definitely decided that I don't want to have to stretch my legs every day. Like, why do I need to kick this high? It's, it's not important. So I switched from kickboxing to boxing. And from there, it just went from, you know, having an exhibition bout, which is just when you, it's kind of like sparring, but more kind of like for like a charity event. You know, everybody's a winner, technically, one of those kind of things. And then I wanted to have a legit fight on the books that maybe my kids one day could Google and say, oh, mom fought and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I wanted to have something a little bit more legit. And then once I actually started fighting, I wanted to do it more and more on, in higher levels. So um, my first exhibition bout was probably December of that same year um, in 2008. Yeah. So, and I've been doing it for almost 10 years, which blows my mind. It's like one of those things where you don't count the years. Do you have a question? Um, I know you do so much stuff, like with your clothing line and all that kind of stuff. How do you stay focused okay. with, I know boxing right now is probably your priority, but yes. how do you fit everything in without being all over the place? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure how I fit everything <laughs> in. It's, it's pretty crazy to, to have it all listed out like that. Um, but of course, boxing does take precedent. Everything kind of works around that schedule. But I try to load up on the lotions and butters and creams like on the weekend when I know I have a little bit more time um, with the clothing line. Um, I might have just like a surge of, okay, I'm gonna do like design like five shirts tonight and put them on the website. And sometimes I just wanna have something for a season. Like if I have a fight coming up, I'm like, let me put something out there and people will have something to buy if they want to you know represent that's fine but it's more so in like kind of patches as far as everything else that i'm doing and then the boxing is just every day rjo is monday through friday you know what's it like for you before going into this fight like what is going through your head are you scared are you i don't know what's you, it like you would never believe me but it is it is, uh, I wish I had pictures of me. It's probably the most relaxed atmosphere ever. It's so zen, it's, if, when I was an amateur, um, let's say Golden Gloves, they have the Golden Gloves fights in Cicero Stadium, um, down south that way, and you kind of find a little hole in the whole you know, stadium and try to just be to yourself because otherwise everybody's like, hey, how you feel? Are you nervous? And they're just in your face and you're like, go, oh, can I have my moment, you know? But um, so I try to find that zen. I was trying to find that zen in those spaces. But for a boxing match, I get my own locker room. Especially since I'm a girl, I get my own locker room. I don't have to share with anybody, which is great. 
So I have the commissioner in there, which is the guy that makes sure that you're not stuffing your gloves with, you know, rolls of quarters. Um, and then I have my coaches in there. Um, if somebody's going to walk me in the ring, um, I have a girl, uh, Summer Lynn. She's 16 now. She just won the Junior Olympics in um, West Virginia. So she's on my team. We spar often. And so I said, I want you to walk me in the ring. So she's in there. And we're watching YouTubes. The last fight I had, we were watching Adrian Broner fight on somebody's phone. And we're just joking and laughing. And it's a really calm atmosphere. There, there's a time right before I go in where I hit a switch. And that's when it's like beast mode. And it's just like, you almost want to just be like, get out of my way. You know, just go almost a little crazy. But until I get to that point, I just stay really calm. I don't let anything bother me. I'm not really rehearsing anything in my head. I'm just really zen, which you would never think wow. ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't really do. I can't really do a lot of music because that gets me really hyped up, and I'm just like, bring it back down, bring it back down. So we decide what music we want, and we make sure the DJ has it maybe a couple nights before, and. Um, it's usually pretty quiet. I don't usually have music in my locker room. We just talk, you know, it's just a bunch of us and we enjoy the company. It's, it's not what you would think. It's really weird. It's kind of like a barbecue. It's not really like, I'm going to go fight somebody right now. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not really afraid of getting hurt. Um, I, I spar with a lot of guys. I do have a couple of bruises. Um, I spar with guys on a regular basis and they tend to be a lot faster and stronger than the girls that I encounter, which make me, um, makes me faster and stronger. So I feel like I have an upper hand on a lot of these girls, uh, hence the three knockouts um, that I have on my resume. <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's one of those things where you train to m keep your hands up and move your head. And you know, if you don't, that's your fault. So. Oh my goodness. Um, the kids are, they're so funny. They, I, I mostly just think about my favorite teachers. Um, I remember my second grade teacher. I remember my sixth grade teacher, fourth, fifth, sixth grade teachers, and just how awesome they were. And um, I just hope to be a little piece of that for them. You're gonna get me all emotional, so mm -hmm. we're done here. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna ask you if you had a, like a short, just maybe just a you know a short video that you might be able to pull up on YouTube. Um, probably. Um, okay, well, I have the last Perfect fight. One. Okay. So this was the last fight that I had. It's actually, I'm not bragging, but it's kind of short. Um, <laughs> not bragging. <laughs> not bragging. <laughs> So we can get to, this is just the intro. Here we go. Um, I believe Ashley is up here in this jean jacket. <laughs> Frank, I think Frank is on one of the main rows. So I take a few hits.
They could hear all of you, uh, I promise. Oh, look at you go! And right before we came out, I could hear her corner say, go right at her, right away. And I'm like, okay, you wanna come at me, you know? And then right before this round, they said, okay, slow it down. And I'm like, oh, we're not slowing anything down. My boyfriend was the one who's doing the video. He's also shooting at the same time. We both shoot, so. It was her chest protector. We have to wear chest protectors, so it's, um, it's supposed to be in your garment. She just kind of tucked it in. I admire her courage. Eyes. Boom. Eyes. Boom. Oh. Oh. And they waved it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Any, other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.